Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we are going through the entire book of Revelation. We're going to finish up uh, Revelation chapter 5 today. John's been in the throne room. Uh, he's looked at the 24 elders. He's seen some of the beings that are around the throne room. He's seen Jesus, the Lamb of God, take the scroll. And uh, we're starting to see some of the worship that is building up in the throne room. And the really cool thing is Revelation 5 is going to end with a whole lot of worship. So I really want to get into this uh, so that we can keep our time together uh, short. Uh, Revelation 5, you're more than welcome to read it along with us, starting at verse 11, says, Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said amen and the elders fell down and worshiped. I don't know if we can even picture the scene it's so incredible. I mean, even going back to verse 12, it says that there were thousands and thousands and thousands of angels. Some uh, passages say 10,000 times 10,000, which would be uh, 100 million. 100 million angels encircling the throne room and singing, all worshiping loudly these words, worthy is the lamb. I don't even know if we can picture it. I don't even know if our brains can understand it. We've never seen anything like that in a movie from Hollywood, right? I don't know. And is, is this the picture that is in your brain when you pray? Is, is this the scene taking place when you pray? And if it's not, how come? Because this is the entire picture of heaven. And verse 13 describing the end of time, says that it's the entire universe, right? The entire universe, all worshiping God and Jesus, singing his praises for all eternity. That's what it says, right? And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. This, this is what uh, we think of when we read Philippians 2.11. Philippians 2.11 says that one day every knee shall bow every tongue confess. That means everyone, every living creature, every single thing that God has made will one day, in the end, worship God. This is how the story ends. It's not just angels worshiping God. It's every created being. That's the end of the story. Everyone, everything made by God, whether it's voluntarily worshiping God in heaven or your worshiping God in a place of punishment. It's true. You can choose to worship God voluntarily for all eternity, or you can worship him in your punishment. And that's the end of the story. Eternity is all of creation worshiping God. People say, what are we going to do in heaven? What are we going to do for all eternity? What are we going to do? Like, like we're going to be bored, right? We're going to be worshiping God, worshiping the Lamb. And I know there are uh, people today who refuse to acknowledge God exists. They don't want to admit God exists, or they don't believe he exists, or they don't uh, believe the Bible is true, or they used to follow God and now they've turned their back on him. <sighs> and, and, or, and they'll say, you know, I just don't believe, or I refuse to believe in a God who, what? Well, the problem is, no matter what you believe right now, and whether you worship God now or not, one day you'll worship God, no matter what. Because the Bible says it. It says every single person one day will worship God. God loves you. You know, I think that's what I want you to know before we sign off today. God loves you, and I just beg you, 
through the screen. I just beg you to worship God today, voluntarily. This is why Christians are so concerned uh, about you and about eternity. We, we don't say that God loves you and that Christ is the only way to God. We don't say that because we're arrogant. We don't say that because we're trying to push our religion or our beliefs on you. We say those things out of concern. Concern for every created person. You know, because you know, people say, well, I refuse to believe in God because God allows suffering. Or I refuse to believe in God because you know, my, my dad died when I was two. Or they say, you know, I don't believe in the Bible because it's full of con- contradictions, it's full of lies. Or the, the Bible promotes racism. The Bible promotes sexism. The Bible promotes slavery. I would just say, you, you, you haven't studied this book. You haven't studied this book. I have studied this book and have millions of Christians. And I think if you casually glance through the Bible or if you get your information off the internet, then you might walk away with some of those ideas, but those aren't facts. You know, I've studied this book, studied it, and there's no way, there's no way this book is wrong. None. Not even, not even a hint of a percent that it could be wrong. And, and so I would just say, it, let's say you're wrong. Don't take a chance. Don't risk it. Don't risk eternity. Don't risk it. Don't risk it based on what you heard your friend in college say or what you read off the internet. Don't risk your eternity for somebody else's wrong interpretation of the Bible. God loves you. Don't end up being one of the people that worships God, as this passage in Revelation says, under the earth. Don't end up being one of those people. Find a community near you, find a church near you, say which one, find one near you, find one near you, go, rediscover your faith, rediscover this book, read this book, pray, ask God questions, ask God hard questions, ask God the serious questions, get back to this, I would, I would beg you. God loves you and he wants a relationship with you. And we all have this choice now while we still can we all have this choice right now voluntarily and the the choice is do you believe the things that christ said you know john sees jesus grab the scroll and he he cries and he says this is it this is my savior this is the one who's going to save us this is going to one who's going to rescue us and so that's the that's the question we have to ask do we really believe that he is our savior that he is the one that can rescue us, that he said that he was from heaven, that he said he was sinless, that he said he had the power to forgive. He said he was God. Do you believe him? That's the question you have to wrestle with. Because he, Jesus either lived and he told the truth, or he lived and died and he was a liar. And then his body is just somewhere buried in the ground. God wants to give you something in your life. He wants to give you his son. And, and it's more than just, it's more than just what it means to be a Christian. It's a relationship. It's salvation. It's eternity. It's so much more. And uh, those things that are promised to us in this book, they're real. And I would just, I would just beg you to put more time and effort into answering those tough questions. And if you've already been on that journey, if you've already been walking down that path and you think that you're ready to give your life over to Christ, if you're ready to acknowledge Him as your Lord and Savior, then I would just invite you to bow your head and pray this prayer with me. Father God, thank you so much that you sent your Son, that He would be our Redeemer that he would be our savior. Thank you for loving me even when I didn't love you back, for seeking me out, for rescuing me, for pulling me away from the pit of despair. Lord, I choose to follow you for the rest of my days. I choose to be your student, your disciple for all eternity. Help me to know you more, to draw closer to you, 
to love you and adore you the rest of my days. Thank you for being my Savior, for being my Messiah. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.